I'm going to try to lift the level of optimism because <laughs> living longer is good, um, especially if we really think it through. And in our team at Prudential, we are very focused on the fact that people are living longer. In fact, in the United States, today's generation is living seven years longer than the previous one. So how do we help people understand what living longer means for retirement security? So we built a wall, and we conducted an experiment. We asked people to place a sticker above the age of the oldest person they have known. And it turns out many people have known someone in their 90s or over 100. So while people are living longer lives, we actually really need to bring the elephant into the room. The retirement age has not changed. Um, I want to, this it is, work. doesn't work. OK. There's a black line here reflecting the retirement age. So that is static. And the reality is we need to prepare for a longer retirement. Because for participants in defined contribution plans, we understand that there's a path forward. There's auto-enrollment, auto-escalation, target date funds, income solutions, uh, <coughs> participant education, regulatory change. All of those things could lead to better outcomes for real people. But where is our plan for defined benefit pensions? How will we create retirement security for millions of people who are depending on underfunded defined benefit plans that are unsustainable? So our goal is to articulate a path forward. It's a sustainability model for managing the key areas of DB risk. So investment risk is the risk that asset performance falls short of expectations. Longevity risk is the risk that planned participants live longer than expected. And intergenerational risk is this risk that plan, the plan pays the benefits of current retirees at the expense of younger people. Now, the failure to manage these key risks is behind the growing funding gap in DB plans today. But there's good news, because we can do something about it. So investment risk can be managed. Risk can be budgeted to try to keep potential losses to affordable levels. And to live within that budget, lower risk, lower volatility investing is the key. There are strategies like LDI, absolute return, private placement loans, ground leases, commercial mortgages, all kinds of way, ways to get value in that strategy. Now, longevity risk can be managed, too especially if we come to terms with some key challenges. Retirement age has to increase with healthy life expectancy. And we need a safety net for disabled workers to retire early and with dignity. The remaining longevity risk in pension plans can be insured. Now, the best way to manage the intergenerational risk is to maintain a healthy funded status and prudently manage the investment and longevity risk. The sustainability model will help pension funds regain a path toward a stable future. So now that we've defined the sustainability model, we're going to race through some of the key themes and considerations from the paper. Defined benefit pension plan sponsors are literally surrounded by risk. They've promised to pay monthly benefits to plan participants for as long as they live and no matter what happens to the assets. So liability risks are shown on the bottom half of this risk dial, and they're really dominated by longevity and inflation. Asset risks are shown in the top half. So long-term investors, the conventional wisdom was always pension funds should take the asset risk. So they've been investing in equities, private equity, hedge funds, commodities, real estate, you name it, they've got it. But the value of those risk assets fluctuates in ways that bear no relationship to their liabilities. So today, plan sponsors have learned the hard way how much risk that strategy <coughs> entails because their funded status has been excruciating. Twice in the last 12 years, US pension funds, these are corporate plans, 
have lost more than 30% funded status in market downturns. So there was the dot-com bust, and then a recovery, and then a financial crisis. And there have been over $230 billion in contributions to corporate plans but all, just since the crisis, but all that cash isn't helping them move to sustained higher ground. So why so little progress? And the answer is risk and leverage. The average U.S. pension fund is only 80% funded, so that unfunded liability is leverage. And in any levered investing strategy, both gains and losses will be magnified. In addition, the average U.S. pension plan is invested in 50 to 60 percent risk assets and only 40 to 50 percent bonds or liability matching assets. So they're holding tremendous interest rate risk due to that asset and liability mismatch. So that means that the assets and the liabilities are independently volatile, as shown here. So this is a real-life example, 34 business days from 2011 when interest rates and equities fell simultaneously, just like they do every time the economy is in trouble. Falling rates mean skyrocketing liabilities, as shown in the top red line. Falling equities mean plummeting assets, as shown in the blue line. The combination can cause a plan sponsor's funded status to sink like a stone. They lost 12% funded status in just six weeks. So two years later, we have yet to see U.S. corporate pension funds regain much of this lost ground. And the current approach for public plans is no better, probably worse. Annual returns on a standard investment strategy of 65% equities and 35% bonds and cash have ranged from negative 23% to positive 30%. And despite the volatility, it's true that the 10-year return on this asset mix has been about seven and three quarters. But the assets invested fall far short of the liabilities. So let's talk about why that matters. It matters a lot. With an expected return on assets of 775, the projected benefit payments are also being discounted at 775. And the plan will, it, will have a growing funding gap if it doesn't earn 775. <coughs> now, the, the plan has achieved a 10-year return on assets of 775. So many believe it's on target. But the plan may only be 60 to 65 percent funded. So it only has 60 to 65 percent of the assets it needs deployed in the markets and earning returns. Well, the plan can reasonably expect to earn 775 on the assets it has invested, but it can reasonably expect to earn zero on the unfunded liability. I call that the allocation to air in the portfolio. <laughs> the air is leverage. So a natural question arises, how difficult will it be for this pension fund to overcome the unfunded liability, meet their current benefit payments, and maintain or improve their funded status. Well, it's going to be really difficult. The plan needs to earn 10.9% just to stay at its present funded status. And if this plan sponsor can't make catch-up contributions, they have to earn 12.7% or more to reach 80% funding within 10 years. The earnings needed would be even higher if they encountered an unexpected increase in longevity or inflation. I promise I'll get to the happy part. It's, it's gonna, it, it'll take a few minutes more. Um, but let's look now at the liability risk, because we've, we've talked about assets, but we have to bring the liabilities into the picture. So the blue line here shows the expected future benefits for a typical corporate plan in the UK and Canada, or a public plan in the US, or in the UK, or in Canada. So in this plan, there are cost of living adjustments on the benefits, and we're assuming for simplicity at the moment that they are fixed at 3%. So inflation fixed at 3 The gray bars show how much risk there is around the projected future liability, 
due to possible variations in longevity. So the only thing we allowed to vary here is longevity. Now, given the pension, that the pension fund offers indexed cost of living adjustments to its participants, the risk of longevity and inflation combined is much larger. In the gray bars on this graph, we've allowed both factors to vary, both longevity and inflation. So our analysis proves that the longevity risk and the inflation risk compound each other. And this fact leads to an important conclusion. Hedging and risk transfer decisions that are made without the longevity risk in the picture will consistently undervalue inflation risk, longevity risk, and interest rate risk. And as a result, they will consistently undervalue the benefits of risk management. So this is intuitive. It's anchored in the fact that if the liability grows due to longevity risk, then the interest rate risk and the inflation risk will be larger because they'd be attached to a larger liability. Now, primary goal of the paper is to prove this point because the standard practice in the market today is to leave longevity risk out of the modeling, which is not helpful. I want to thank Guy Coughlin for working to bring about change in this regard and for providing the analysis on the next few slides. Now, we don't have time to do justice to this part of the, of the discussion, but Guy and I are happy to take questions about it. So we're going to... So we're creating a sustainability model. I promised I'd get to the hopeful part. Um, this sustainability model is a departure from current conventional wisdom. Today, most pension funds are managed like endowments. They take significant asset risk, and they mean to boost their returns so they can minimize overall contributions to the plan. Risk budgeting is generally missing. So almost no one today is asking whether potential losses are affordable. In the sustainability model, the goal is to harness risk more carefully than we have in the past. Potential losses would be budgeted. Risk can still be taken as long as the potential losses are affordable. And affordability is different for every plan sponsor. Public plans will focus on their debt burden and the impact on future taxes. Corporate plans will look at debt burden, shareholders' equity, and free cash flow. So once that risk budget is set, the next step is to allocate the risk budget. For a closed or frozen plan, the asset strategy would be roughly three quarters fixed income. And to boost yield, the portfolio should include illiquid fixed income. For an open plan, risky assets will be much lower than current levels. Many will aim for one third equities, one third bonds, and one third absolute return. Now, whether a plan is open or closed, longevity risk on the retirees will be insured or hedged. So one way to think about this transition to a sustainability model is to think of the pension fund as the plan sponsor's insurance subsidiary. It has written annuities just like a monoline pension, fund, just like a monoline pension insurer who would hold enough assets to meet the liabilities and then some. That monoline insurer would also engage in asset and liability matching and would reinsure its longevity risk. Now, pension funds don't need to move fully toward insurance principles to achieve stability. Instead, the goal should be to find the halfway point between these two models so that the pension funds are able to sustain themselves in the long run and keep their promises to plan participants. The key is to prepare for a longer retirement with sustainable DB plans because the retirement security of real people depends on it. Thank you very much.